What's up, everyone? This is Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. This is our Marsman roundtable discussion on episode two of the Halo TV series. And of course, I'm joined along with the Marsman crew themselves. And to my left is Haki. Hey, guys. And to my right is Langella Kill 75. What's up, everybody? So, I, obviously, Langell Kill is a little under the weather, so he's, he's yeah. toughing it out for us today. Uh, but uh, just to kind of get. Um, get started here uh episode two was a really mixed bag of of <laughs> i don't even know what to call it to be honest with you um without being insulting but um i have a lot of mixed feelings and to start off the just before we jump into everything guys if you haven't done so yet please make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content if you like stuff like this it really supports the channel when you drop that thumbs up helps us with that youtube algorithm but I always like to start our non-spoiler reviews with a general thoughts about what we watched for episode two. And I'll get mine first. Generally, I thought this episode kind of sucked. Um, I honestly was, uh, I, it, I was fearing that this was a filler episode and, and boy, was it a filler episode. It kind of came off as one of those things that like, it doesn't matter. Like you could have not watched this episode and you would have been like, okay for episode three uh, because generally not much really occurs. It was all talk nothing other than that I was all scheming politicking and I'm okay with some story development when it comes to politics I'm okay with that stuff but this literally was boring politicking this had nothing no scheming no like oh that, that they caught me on that one it was really just boring it was just talking just boring and I want to get your thoughts on this uh on this on this episode just just some general things so Angelica want to give me your your thoughts on what you saw first here yeah, and I appreciate you saying uh, I am under the weather. It's not the Halo show that ruined my my <laughs> confidence and my voice. Um, but this show is exactly like you said. It, it kind of just, someone just dumped right in our hands, uh, the Halo fans' hands. And we just had to really just take it and whip that thing because that was, that was really bad. Mm. Um, you know, my, like you mentioned, lack of uh, action, lack of fighting, lack of uh, cool scenes it's crazy in like a halo show with the entire show you have no action or entire episode excuse me like yeah. that to me is wild that is wild like we're not talking about a house of cards right yeah. like we're talking about a sci-fi action uh genre with no action in an episode um which is just wild and <laughs> and you like you mentioned the unsc politics um, it was a lot of info thrown on you um, to kind of get you to understand the direction of the show creators, where they're going with this. Still a lot of confusing uh, things that they we need to know more on, but they introduced a lot of where they're going to go, um, which is not similar to, like we talk about, the normal timeline and the normal lore. So that's something to digest. Um, but overall, this just felt like someone dumped it in your hands. Um just open cheeked, just the yeah. thing. Just right. like that was gross, dude. Like it was what gross. Was, yeah. It smelled awful, <laughs> and you felt dirty afterwards. Um, you mentioned you like you didn't have to watch it. I wish we didn't watch it. I wish this uh, episode didn't exist. I, like, I, I to episode three. I honestly like you know because I'm watching gaming. It we have to watch it. We have to. We have to watch it. I mean, we're we're all Halo fans, but like it literally just felt like every time I was at I was at work watching this thing, and I literally every time like someone was like. Are you okay? I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm okay yeah. or not. Uh, Haki, what's your general thoughts on what you watched, what you watched today? Yeah, so uh, I guess I should have watched it uh, just in the morning. You know, I watched I watched half last night, probably at midnight. Couldn't even get through it because it was that boring. I felt myself falling asleep. Um, and then kind of like you guys said, I, I wish I waited to take a shower after I watched it because I took it, got up in the morning. Uh, maybe, the, you know, the second half of the episode was going to be good. I took a shower, I ate, and then I watched it, and it was bad. It was just not good. Felt mm -hmm. dirty, kind of like Frank said. There was zero action. No, was, yeah, was zero, zero action. zero action. And listen, uh, yeah. we we <laughs> we here at Mario's Main Game, we try to be positive. So I love I Halo. Get, I love Halo. Yeah, we love it. We, we've been Halo fans since the very beginning. You know, I, you could tell by my giant – helmet back there and also the one next to it over here um so listen we're gonna try to bring some positives the only po the positive we find right from this episode and i'll start with mine first 
we'll do a round a little round table. So we'll go each say a positive and then we'll move on to see if we have another positive or not. But my first positive was at least they gave us more characters in the Halo universe. I like the fact that they introduced Lord Hood. Lord Hood came back. This is a introduction to Lord Hood. If anyone doesn't know, he was the the head honcho of the UNSC when we watched the play in the games. Pretty cool thing. Venture, who is a new rebel villain. Uh, you know, I've seen the actor before. He's not bad. Uh, I want to see how he plays out. He's just been a brutal dude. We saw the Prophet of Truth and Regret, which was a good thing because I wanted to see the both of them. I want to see all three of the Prophets in the same I room only together. wish they said their names. I know. Like, they just said they Prophet of Mercy was the only one they, they said, said the entire mercy. time. Yeah. I, come on. Give me – and let and they're too similar. Like, I feel like, yeah. you know, in the video games, they're all different in a way. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. – uh, they they were all different, but they they all look too similar. The fourth one was Soren, who I think is right now the best character right now in the show is Soren, who matches identically to the lore of of Halo, which is great. That's why I like Soren. Was he, in the lore of the show, lore of the games, Soren is the same way he is depicted. The backstories of Soren is exactly the same, and I liked that character a lot. So I really, really like Soren. So I like the fact that they expanded the universe with more characters. So uh, let's go with hockey first. What's the one positive that you found? Yeah, so um, I thought it was cool. Like you said, Soren, uh, I thought that actor did a very good job depicting uh, Soren. Also seeing the prophets as well was cool. Uh, but mine is going to go back to something that Halo has always been good at. Together than Halo 5, and that is the music. I thought the music was good you know um that was one of the positives that i was able to pull out of this episode was was you know even though there wasn't any action so there wasn't great action music the the background music was was still you know pretty good mm -hmm. so uh langelica what what did you uh see as a positive here you know what's sad is chris is probably like, he's probably right um i was so turned off by the episode i didn't even notice the music playing there, like, yeah, there, there actually was some decent music, and especially like when you that, got, that's the sad part is you're probably right, and I just glossed over it because I was just turned off by what I was watching. Mm -hmm. um, but I will stick with the positives, and I'm just going to piggyback on what Mars Van said about some of the introduction uh, of characters and some character development. Soren, to me, uh, I agree with Mars Van, um, probably is the best character um, so far that we've seen. Uh, I've only seen him from one episode. We'll talk about in the spoilers some things I don't like. Um, but overall, I actually thought they did a good job with him. Uh, he had a pretty solid personality. And also the Silver Team. I actually think the Spartan Silver Team is written better than Master Chief, which is just <laughs> Dude, crazy. I was literally thinking the same thing. And the build off of that, I, I, I want to talk about the Spartans in general. One of the second positives that I have is expanding on the backstory of the Spartans. This is what I've been waiting for. I wanted to have a story of some kind of movie, TV show, something that wasn't a cartoon variation about the backstory of Spartans. The Spartan program is one of the coolest backstories I have ever seen. And me being a history guy myself, because it's based off the actual Spartans in Greece, like kind of a training method they had. So I love the kind of concept that there was. And I thought that the episode basically starts with that scene that and I'm not going to break any, I'm not going to spoil anything here, but the scene that goes into the backstory of the Spartans. And I, I, I like the fact that it brings into more of the situation that like Spartans are trained to be like machines with no emotion, just do your job and that's it. And that Soren character kind of expands that and says, you know, we're, we're not just machines here, John, like, you know, like that stuff. And I, I agree with you. I, I think silver team, I love them. Like if I'm, if I'm picking my best characters or group, it's Soren's right now, number one, and Silver Team's probably number two because they are pinnacle of what I looked at as being Spartan characters and how diverse. And obviously, Halsey's probably my number three, but like all those, that, that three grouping of characters is right now my favorite. And I'm not even, I'm not going to say I'm because I'm ragging on Chief, but just the way the writing Chief just makes me get annoyed about the whole situation. But I like the fact that they're bringing backstory to the Spartan program. That's why I wanted to see that for a long time. Uh, so let's go. Let's do it again. So, uh, Haki, what's another positive? If you have another, like, I'm not going to force you to say something positive. You all agree. Uh, <laughs> but do, you, do, you, do you have another positive that you want to mention? Yeah. I mean, so another positive is, you know, the CGI. <laughs> there's no action. So there's no action CGI. So, you know, but the CGI, like, Chief looks good when he has his helmet on for the 10% 
that he had his helmet on, the actual chief armor and the helmet look awesome. He mm-hmm. didn't, you know, I don't want to spoil anything. We'll get into the spoilers later, but chief when he's got his full gear on looks awesome. The elite, even though he did some weird hand gesture at the end there, like I, they didn't need to do that, but the yeah, elite yeah, yeah. face, like he didn't just look like a, you know, an LG refrigerator, like went close up. Yeah. They, but you know, they spent money on that at least, you know, uh, I think, the the, yeah, I think the CGI <laughs> in the right sense they did good. So that's yeah. another positive that I'm pulling out of a very not so positive episode, at least. Uh, Langella Kill, do you have another positive? Uh, yeah, I actually, it feels like eh, we didn't collaborate on this, but I have the same yeah. one you have. I like that they introduced kind of background into the Spartan program. Um, now we're going to, when we go into the spoilers, there are things that are just, again, I talk about layups, right? Layups for shows. And there's like so many. Um, to you're not going to completely satisfy the, the Halo universe, but there are some easy ones that you can. This show just refuses to take some layups. But the background with Soren, I thought was a good idea and a good thing that they implemented. And I like how they go into that because that's what drives the man versus machine thing, right? Like that's what's driving that aspect is how they were brought up, how they were turned, how they were changed. Um, so I think that's an important aspect to talk about. You don't get enough of that in the game. Um, which unfortunately lacks for the gaming industry on why, you know, trying to turn people on, she trying to decide if he's a human or machine. Um, so that's a good thing. And you notice, guys, when they stick closer to the lore, those are the better those parts. Those are the best parts. Yeah, those are the better right? parts. I agree. I agree completely. And I, I, like I said, I said last week that I'm making my own video about video game, TV shows, and movies. And that's one of the big things I'm going to talk about. Like lore, keeping it lore accurate makes life so much easier for those that make the, that are directing these shows. And with that being said, let's go into the negatives. And I feel like we can talk all day about this, but um, I'm going to start start with this. And I've, I'm sure a lot of all three, like all three of us can agree. Chief being the helmetless warrior is not really ideal for me. I think I'm kind of tired of seeing him basically this episode. And this is not really a spoiler, but this episode, he had his helmet on for maybe 10% maybe 10% pushing it 10% of the whole show. He was wearing his helmet. And honestly, that defeats his character arc where he's basically supposed to be a stone faced soldier. And I'm not going to rag on Pablo Shriver because he does a decent job as chief, but I hate the writing they have for him. But basically he's just like, he's just casually just boop. And then just has his face and makes motion. Like, oh, he makes emotion. Like chief doesn't do that. Chief doesn't have those emotions. Like, he's always calm and collected. i never seen Chief, like, straight up, I saw Pablo Shriver start throwing dudes and screaming at him like he's Batman in certain parts. Like, that does not depict to me what Chief is. The Chief is not the emotional, like, fiend. Seriously? And that's why you, th- if you play the games and you play all three in- and you get to Halo 4, the first time you ever see Chief use emotion is like, whoa. Like, Chief with emotion? That could be a big deal. This show seems like, oh, he, he's an emotional guy. He does this stuff all that. Like, no, he doesn't. And that, like, I agree, I get it. It's a silver timeline. And I, I'm saying to myself, it's a brand new story, but you're writing characters that you're supposed to keep consistent differently, right? You keep you're writing them differently. And to be honest, when you compare like Silver Team, Silver Team, if they're supposed to be the mirrors of Blue Team, like from the lore, and Blue Team and Silver Team usually are supposed to take their helmets off more often. They're, they have more emotion than Chief does. Chief, never takes off his helmet in the lore because back when he used to be more emotional, his friend dies when he, there were kids growing up and he never took his helmet off after that because he wanted to stay focused on the mission because the one time he didn't, his friend, his boy got killed. That's the whole like backstory. And the whole point is that's his character, his character that he's always on mission, no matter what. Instead, you change him to be not that chief. And that part is like the messed up thing is that this is not the same master chief. And I think this, this episode did more on that than the last one. The last one was similar to what I saw. And there were some parts I was like, I don't know if that was, that's what Chief would say here. But this episode literally threw that out the whole Chief persona. Just threw it to the side. And they just created their own one. I didn't really like it. Um, so, Angelica, let's go with you first here. Uh, what's one negative you said? You nailed the, the biggest one. And that is, this was a bad episode for Halo Fanatics of the lore for Master Chief. I mean, this was like, felt like, you know, you want to talk about metaverse. This is like anti-chief, it feels like. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. they're just vastly different. You get very little connection of that Stone Cold 
you know, but having his helmet off for 90% of the episode was wild to me. Just absolutely wild. I know they were giving us a precursor before the show came out that you're going to see Halo Chief's face. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. my God. They didn't yeah. do like, I thought even when they said that, that you're going to get a, like a, a couple times maybe. They are just absolutely insane. This is like, it, it's it's just completely different. Like, I understand like when he was on, even when he was on uh, the Rebel base, and we'll go into that with spoilers, when he said you have to, I wish there was like a little confrontation saying like, I don't know if I want to take it off. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's none. He's just like, screw it. All right. Take it off. Like, I got to take it off. I got, I got, you got to take off your armor, your helmet, because I just got the floors done. Like, what, <laughs> what are we, what are we talking, what are we talking about here? And then, and then the chief getting emotional. Mm. I mean, you're supposed to build up this man versus machine thing. And they just feel like it's just, it's been so rushed. Um, Like right out of the gate, episode one, he realizes he's a human. Episode two, man, he's like interrogating people like Batman and Joker. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, seriously. Like, it makes no sense for his character and that to me is the number one this was like not very cheap like worse than in, in the first episode and i thought that he was pretty different in the first episode so that's easily number one so hockey what is one uh what's one negative that you have here yeah so i mean we're we're all in agreement here it's you know it's chief having his helmet off i mean not only 90 percent, but like he didn't he had his helmet off the entire time until the last 10 minutes of the episode where they were taking him off the ship you know no no spoilers but they're taking him off the ship and he's got his helmet on and then after that he's got his helmet off he literally has his helmet on i think for like two three minutes, two to three minutes i think two to three <laughs> minutes in a 50 minute show right so i i don't know if they think that like they can't get the emotion out of cheap i think the actor like you said Mars is a he's a good actor he, portrays them well but maybe they think they can't get emotion out of a, a, a mask but again not to bring up other shows but the man no, bring it off bring it on mandalorian exactly the mandalorian he took his mask off twice in two seasons and it was near you know near death experience where he had to and he that, that was he, he was great you know emotion 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 i mean i think it's more emotional to have a mask and just you know, have them turn around and look look at you real quick. I mean, you they can do, especially with Chief. Like, yeah. who's the Mandalorian uh, against the Chief? You know, like yeah. against Master Chief. So, I, I think they're just they're going way, way, way off um, of, of of this straight line that, that we know of, of Halo. So, again, yeah, that, that's it's a, just that's getting it's just kind of getting out of hand with how like yeah, it's, it's, I, it's just it's just uh, it's bizarre yeah. to me, but. Um, I'll go to my second one. And my second one is this political drama between Halsey and her daughter, Miranda Keys, is outright dumb. It's just dumb. It, it makes no sense. Like, I'm cool with having political, like, one up over the other. But this Lily Jit has this fight between mom and mom and daughter gives me zero interest all around. Like, I, like I, I'm not spoiling too much here, but it's all about funding, guys. It's about government funding can we get can i get funding from my program versus my mom's program and why is my mom getting more funding than me like uh, we're, we're i'm learning about the load of sway healy language like what we talk like, this is the dumbest thing to like squabble over like it's like literally so stupid like okay so you're learning the swahili language i'm getting spartans ready to combat the, the covenant who is more important here and this battle between daughter and mother because this whole setup they're doing where like the like mommy wasn't there to take me to the fair like I, I really honestly don't care about it and I, I it just took up more screen time than Soren and Soren was probably the best character you had so far and it kind of makes me annoyed because it seems like the priorities of these writers is out of whack instead of you writing in some action sequences where maybe like Chief had a fight off against some like some rebels or something like that because remember they you know like I'm not gonna go into con- like uh, spoilers here but you know there's still that outside issue Right? Instead of doing that, you just go into talking fests where it's all about funding and about the Cortana program and all these things. It's just like, it's so boring. This is just boring. Yeah. You, you, the writing is boring. And I I, I, I I wonder what you guys think, but Angelica, what's another negative that you have for us? Here? Yeah, and I, I mentioned it earlier, no action in the episode. The only action was a uh, flight scene which showed, you know, Chief's like being a badass pilot. Um, maskless Chief, because he could couldn't put the mask on. He had to be uh, masks for that. But yeah. 
that was the probably one of the coolest scenes of it, and it was short. Mm-hmm. It showed him being a cool, uh, a good pilot, which we know he is, right? He's a do it all uh, character. Um, but outside of that, like you mentioned, no action in a sci-fi. <laughs> in a sci, in sci-fi, a sci-fi, a, in a sci-fi Halo. action genre. Like that's really what Halo is: an action sci-fi action shooter, a shooter yeah. story game. And, and you have no zero action. of that, none, none of that. And like, it's like you said, what is it? Eight episodes? Like you, I think, yeah, throw, I think you eight. can't throw an episode like into the wind. This isn't a twenty-episode season. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree, man. Uh, Haki, what's another negative that you have here? Yeah, so you know, going over the mask off, um, and kind of like you guys are saying, I mean, I, there, there's so many. There, unfortunately, there's so many negatives that you can pull from this episode. Um, yeah. But again, the the biggest one was you know the mask off, and then like Langelico said, the the no action. Master Chief did not shoot one bullet. The only guy that shot a bullet was the guy Vin Venture. Well, I'm sorry. What was yeah, his name? Vin, yeah, Venture. Vin, Venture. Yeah, whatever. His name, you know, he was the only like he was the only one. I mean, he pulled the girl's hood up and was like, oh yeah, and then just like and then clapped her like that. It was like Master Chief did not shoot one bullet he did not throw one grenade there were no you yeah, know the one first grenade. episodes there were swords going there was there was guns yeah um, there's so he, much it felt like all the cgi money went for that first episode and they're like well we yeah. gotta have an episode with zero cgi in it because we can't physically do it i got a great idea zero left. cgi let's just have master chief with his mask off the entire time like, yeah. there you go like that that was just like the board room, I guess. and to be honest was, like I, and I, I'll, I'll finish off. I want to finish off with one more negative, and I'm not sure if you guys have another one or not. But the writing right now makes just makes no sense. Like there are some things they prioritize, like like Chief moving a forklift out of the way. Like, oh, like I can't like, wait. Spoilers on that. Walking, because... walking through like, and then like the, I, they said, there's they they are possibly the worst people to set up a story like down the line. And we'll get into more spoilers about what I mean by that. But this writing that they do in this in this episode makes me want to puke and honestly it, there's a lot of things that i can go into and i'm going i will go into it for the section but there's a lot of things that have gotten me so angry watching and i want to just as i'm getting fired up i want to get to the ratings unless yeah, you guys have another right. negative let i want to so right. hockey look give me a give me your rating about what you would get for this episode uh yeah the the more that we talk about it the less the rating is so <laughs> i mean i guess for the show, it's better that we talk about it now than we talk about it at the absolute end. Um, I'm at like a six two. I gave it a seven one the last episode. I'm well, listen, man. Listen, well, listen, are you, listen. Are you, are you, I think I, mean, I think I think Haki, Haki has to understand is six that two. I, I, listen, there's a big difference, and we've talked about this before. TV shows and movies ratings are more critical than like hey, game man, stuff. You give, and if you're giving it, so get, tell us why. Guy. Tell You're us very, why. Very generous. You gotta, you gotta tell us why. Why, why, why do you think that, man? <laughs> tell me know. why. Now I don't think it's just, now I'm like, now we're talking about it. It's like, don't, don't change it now. Don't change it. Yeah. Tell, I mean, what it do you a, think? Why do you, what do you think that? Why do I think, think the only reason why I was a 6 2 is because, uh, like you said, Mars, it, like, the coolest part was Thorin. Like, I thought he at least brought it into the very low sixes, like the, the very, very small amount of backstory that we got into the Spartan. Mm-hmm. um the spartan uh program and and soren i mean that's it but again the, the more that we talk about it um uh, i feel like you guys are gonna blow my score out of the water out of the water but i possible. think possible. i think soren and then maybe what's her name con what, what was yeah, Quan. Quan not taking the drugs that that she was offered that story <laughs> arc is fantastic <laughs> <laughs> that really put it in the sixes you know but no i, I think i don't know i think just think soren and like possibly the the three prophets that we saw, like uh, I'm, I now I feel disgraced putting it in the sixes. But I I mean I don't know. It was I fell asleep. I shouldn't have put it in the sixes. <laughs> I fell asleep during it. But I'm I you know I'm I'm a man of my word. So six two is what it is. All right, Langella Kill. What's uh what's your score? Are we going, are we going sevens. Aki, we going- <laughs> Aki is a generous man. Very generous. And I get a seven one last time. <laughs> but seven one, I can understand. Um, from the first one, episode, yeah, this one. From uh, the first episode, yeah. um, I rated um, again, like Marsman was kind of saying before. I games and movies slash, and then movie and TV shows are a little graded differently for me. Um, a seven out of ten for video games is average. Um, a five out of ten for a movie or a show is average. 
Um, this was an average, right? So this was below average. Um, I have it at a 3.5 out of 10. And um, I, I don't mind politics in shows. I don't mind driving uh, issues and driving wedges in between different characters. I actually think it's important. But when you just have that and it's done poorly, it makes what a boring episode even worse. And I just think if you're a generic friend, like just someone who doesn't know what Halo is, you just watched it, it was a boring episode. And if you were a Halo fanatic, you were grossed out by this. Um, so that's kind of where I am. 3.5 out of 10. I just couldn't find the points. Um, this was not a good episode. Uh, so when I'm looking at this, uh, this show has a lot of struggles. Um, it struggles to just keep me interested, right? And I, there's limited characters so far that get me to actually like say, all right, when, when, what's going to happen next? And right now, Soren, Silver Demon, Halsey, the only three characters I think are, are, are looking like what they should be while everyone else is struggling to really keep afloat here. Chief, in my opinion, is so different that it's hard to say I like the way he's being developed because the part the here's the problem i think pablo shriver does a decent job at playing as master chief like but the writing on this show is so horrid right now that i honestly am just nervous of what is going to happen next to him like I, I honestly think he might like instead of like chief being the chief we know he might just end up being like end up being like a lawyer or something or like you know he might run for politics at some point and, and it, like he'll just run, wear a suit no no helmet like i'm I'm running against uh, the, the UNSC to show that they're corrupt, like something stupid like that, because they just don't know who he is. The Quan arc is something I really don't care about. Like I, I honestly watched this show and said, I really don't care about Quan really that much. And and then now this episode made me even not even care about any more. And we'll get into the spoilers on why. Um, the Ma Maki gets me nervous. Like this is getting me more and more nervous. Like the first episode I was like, okay, this is like, this is interesting. Um, because it barely showed her much, but they set that up like, all right, let's see what happens. The second episode got me more nervous about it. Um, and the ending got me even extremely nervous about it. Um, but then on top of that, the political issues of this episode made no sense to me. And honestly, it was so stupid. I never thought that a TV show with eight episodes would have one with a filler. Because fillers usually happens in anime where like nothing occurs because you have like 900 plus episodes that you could take one and just use it for filler. But you only have eight episodes per season. You use one for filler. It makes zero sense whatsoever. Um, and when I gave my rating last time, I said, well, if you are a fan, if you never watched Halo before, you usually would have a little bit higher of a rating because, you know, you don't know the story. You, you think that, hey, is, as long as this writing is compelling, then I'm going to be okay with it. And just like Lajil Kill said, if you're a Halo fan, you watch this, you'll be sick to your stomach. So, um, if I was a if I was a someone that didn't know Halo, I would give this a three point five. But I am a Halo fan. I'm giving this a three. It's a three from me. I, this is one of the worst thing. I honestly <laughs> am on the fringe of being interested in watching this anymore. Like this is like because I know there's like two steps that we, you can go. Like there's like there's what two directions. You're in a fork in the road here, Paramount. You're in a fork of the road. You can either take one direction where you're going to have me at least slightly interested and say, all right, let me, let me watch it. I get, I know it's not Halo, but like it has the universe of it. Or you can go the other direction and where I'm really going to be sick to my stomach because people are going to watch the show and think like, oh, this is what Halo's about. And it's going to get me angry every time because it's not. This is like taking the halo story like halo canon and characters and literally just saying oh that's trash and let me just mold it let me take a dump on it and throw it at your face and say <laughs> you should like this and if you don't like it then that's your problem not our problem but you know the reason why I'm, that's the reason why i'm giving you the three because not even is this entertaining but it's a spit in the face of everything that was created beforehand and i think that's the worst part and like i said people and like i get it you didn't play the games but you could at least read about one of the, you could read a book, like read one book and I could tell you that exactly what, how to make these characters. Like, geez, man, like I, I, I don't really get it, but yeah. I can go all day and don't worry in the rant, we will go for a little while, but that's going to be it for our non-spoiler review of the second episode of the Halo TV show. And listen, as much as I can rag on it, um, if you want to go watch it, go right ahead. I'm not going to stop you. And my suggestion is, I want you to go watch it and I want you to comment below and tell me what you think, what your rating would be. If you didn't agree with any of us or if you did agree with one of us, tell us why. Because I really want to hear what you think. Because um, maybe I'm just having sour grapes. But hell, uh, if someone agrees with me, then, then maybe I'm, I think I know what I'm talking about here. But well, that's going to be it for our spoiler, uh, non-spoiler review. Next up, second half of the video is our spoiler section. 
So let's go there right now. Well, guys, uh, spoiler section here. Like I said in the beginning of the last section, this this episode sucked. It it really was horrible. And I'm I I literally I I couldn't imagine my facial like what I my face looked like when watching this because I literally had had several people ask me like, "Are you okay?" And I honestly was like just another shock and anger. Like I I was like, I was completely angry watching this. And what we're gonna do for the spoiler section is I broke it down the every twenty minutes of the episode, the beginning, middle, and end. And I'll kind of, and then we'll briefly talk, I guess, about some of the future things we'd like to see, but it really depends on timing here, but let's go into the beginning. So first things first, we got to talk about the backstory between Chief and Soren, because that's how the episode starts. That possibly was one of the better parts of the entire episode, because it gives you that context of who the hell is Soren and how does Chief know Soren, the relationship they kind of had. And granted, it was not really that long of a piece, but it does everything it's set to do. It gives you that young Chief looking at Soren's bed as he's walking out and then he sees Soren he's like hey dude like what what the hell are you doing why are you leaving he's like and it, apparently it seemed as if Chief and Soren had a plan to leave yeah. together that was where it got interesting that Soren was expecting Chief to be like dude where's your armor we gotta go and he's like I'm not going with you right and it kind of set up that like Chief was on the fringe of leaving but he decided not to and I kind of like that concept where it's Chief was least like understood that there were there's some things wrong going on here and you know he you know he, he made the decision now granted i heard a lot of people say that chief kind of looked like a douche um for basically saying all right you got five minutes get out of here uh i get it but like i didn't really mind that part i think it was kind of like fitting like i don't think five like they made it seem like the five minutes was like so brutal chief how could you how could you only give him five why don't you give him seven like it's like oh like, yes for ten yes for ten he says i'm giving you five like and at the end of the day, I, I I was just I like that part. Yeah. I guess you can be schematic, but so I so let's Angelica, What did you think of that first first no, section? I, the little I part? actually I agree with you. I, I actually that the episode how it started. I actually felt like, hey, you know, maybe it's not as bad as what everyone's saying because <laughs> you know this was like a, a good flashback. It wasn't long, and it kind of set the table for you know Chief was considering jumping ship. There was a, a Spartan that did jump ship, and you know Chief. You know, following protocols was going to either take him in or take him out when he decided to go back. Um, and then he gave, you know, a chief line, right? His gun jam. Um, and then when he asked for 10 minutes, uh, you know, it was like, you got five. And I'm going to let him win. Uh, and I'm going to alarm base. Um, it's kind of set up like a dumb thing because, like, oh, actually, no, those five minutes were really important, apparently, <laughs> um, because he got, you know, gun no, jam. I, I laugh because then he's like, he's like walking. Like, you got five minutes. It's just like, walks yeah. away like dude As run a, like just run, running, right? start so, like, running the, dude the timing was that bad yeah why wasn't like, there any urgency to get the hell out of there you know what i mean so like but like overall um i thought it was a good strong scene um and it set it up for kind of the rest of the episode um but it kind of it just showed like hey and soren um can kind of like see through the treatments that they give spartans and he was trying to convince john that hey they're brainwashing us um and so, like, that that was a solid scene. Mm -hmm. Yo, Haki, what did you think of that? Yeah, so I, I, I like you guys said, I, I thought that scene was uh, probably one of the best in the episode, right? Um, and let me just make something clear. You guys are definitely a little more lore-oriented than I am. So um, I'm sure – I don't I don't know if I will get a little hate on my score. I know you guys are, are shocked <laughs> by my score. But, it, you know, I'm maybe a little more lenient. Um, you're, you're grading on the video game scale. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not using these things. Like yeah, because that's, that's the thing. A six, show, a six yeah. in video game is like, though, this is a bad game. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. but yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. So I got to, I'll, I'll, you know, for next episode, I hope to God my next episode, <laughs> the next episode isn't a three on your book. I hope it's, you know, I hope it's a six on your book, which is, I don't know, maybe a nine on my book, right? But um, again, so this scene, best scene, but they could have done it with the helmets on. I don't need to see the Spartan's face. All that entire scene, could they all could have had the helmets on. I don't know if Spartans sleep with their helmets on or what. You know, yeah. No, but they don't. They don't. And they don't. I understand they don't, but I'll, I'll say this. I'll push back a little. I understand John not having his equipment, right? Because he got out of bed oh, okay. and he just booked yeah. out. But you're right about Sword. Why does Sword have, you, have, you have all on? your armor why on when, except your why, helmet? Why couldn't when John confronted him, Sword take his helmet off at that point? Yeah. And be like, hey, we're human. 
You know what I mean? Like, yeah, why did it off automatically? I like, know. What is with that, the that part, that, yeah, that what is with non-helmets in this show? It's it's like literally they can't speak unless they have no helmet on. Like they can't. Yeah. I can't breathe. I gotta take this off. Like no. Like come and and. Granted, I like the store a soaring aspect because that is a lore. It's a lore accurate. It, yeah. like, that's this is a lore accurate story plot. Like this actually happens in the lore, and this they really created the soaring protocol because of an eight wall Spartan. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Something lore accurate. Not not great. I get it. Some something off the lights, the silver timeline, whatever. But th this is taking an aspect from the lore and running with it makes the things better. Now. I wanted to briefly touch upon the fact that they had gotten now Venture, who I'm not the later the scene where you see Venture comes in later in the middle portion, but they mentioned the fact that there's a new rebel leader that named Venture who basically was like a, I guess you would say a traitor to the rebels because he wanted to make a deal with the UNSC from the very beginning and basically use the UNSC's materials to just take over all the entire planet of Magical. Um, and I kind of wanted to get your feelings about this new villain that apparently now uh, Quan is going to be facing off mano a mano with that's going to be her her story arc if you want to call it that and now because the trailer i'll just give everyone a heads up the trailer for episode three has aspects of the soren and kwan taking on venture and then chief oh and chief is is doing his own thing with the other spartans and cortana is going to be introduced so that's what i saw in the trailer arc the the preview that they're doing so i i saw that and I was like, all right, so that's what they're going with this. Soren and Quan are going to take on the venture, and that will be their thing. Um, so I kind of, I, I thought, honestly, like, okay, you're adding more tears to this story. And I, that's why I was like, I didn't really care about the Quan arc because, like, I thought Quan was important only because she was with Chief. But now the fact that she's not with Chief makes me not care about her anymore because it's like the whole point is Chief is the main character, right? And I thought she was going to bring the humanity to Chief, like the way Cortana was with the video games. But now that she's not there, and now Chief is no longer has her, it kind of makes me feel like, why, why are we even looking at her anymore, right? And and obviously they're going to because they paid the actor this much amount of money to go act, but yeah. the whole point is it's just like, I, I don't really care about this arc that you're developing here. Yeah. So so uh, so let's go hockey this time. What do you think about this new villain, the uh, Venture? Um, what do you think about him? Yeah, I mean, um, again, a very, very short amount of, of uh, screen time. Um, but, I mean, he's evil, you know? Like, yeah. he was walling people's heads off. That, that was literally the only gunshot, the only action in the entire episode. He was blowing people's heads off. He even took the hood off of one person, looked him right in the face, put it back on, and, and, uh, and shot him in the face, you know? So he's definitely going to be um, an evil person. But remember, he has rebel guns, so we'll see how good those rebel guns are <laughs> if he ever comes in contact with a Spartan or an elite. So, uh, you know, again, he was a cool character, but he was on screen for, you know, two minutes. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see his arc, you know. Yeah, and I'll hop on that. I just think that there wasn't enough airtime for me to get a great deal for him. It kind of just feels like one of those, again, forced villains. You know what I mean? Like, oh, he's the bad guy, right? Because... They showed one scene of him executing a bunch of rebels, right? So yeah. Like, you, don't, you don't really get a good grasp of him. You're just like he's supposed to be a somewhat of a, a speaker, like a, a, a you know a leader to try to kind of like a mole for UNSC um, to try to align these rebels back to them. Um, so that's an interesting aspect, but we just didn't get enough. The one scene we got, you know, had an interesting aspect and also a dumb aspect that we'll talk about in the middle part. Yeah, so um, I agree with you guys. And and let's talk about the next thing was meeting Soren. Now, meeting him on the rubble, which is now the, the planet that, that Soren controls completely. And it's kind of like a, and I'll, I'll joke around if anyone doesn't know, it's like Metal Gear Solid, like Zanzibar land, where it's like you're, you, it's like a, a land with no rules and, and no like you and all outlaws and anyone can go there. But the only thing is like the boss is basically Soren is the head honcho on the rubble. Um I kind of like this. The first off, the music. This is where I thought the music was actually like decent. Was they introduced the rubble, the look of rubble, like the CGI of it looked really cool. I like the concept they had, like this futuristic like mining facility, basically, which and had all these different groups of people. Um, one of the dumbest scenes I think in the entire thing was Chief like moving that crane, like man, yes. moving that thing out of the way. <laughs> even, though, even though like guys, you watch the episode like. 
you could literally see like you could, if you're chief just like shimmy around the forklift like it's like it's not like the forklift took the entire hallway it was literally like just moved in front of him and he could have just like took a step to the left walked forward and took a step to the right and they would have been fine it was just kind of like oh, oh we got to throw in some like cgi chief stuff and just like, like let him let him bench press no a, a forklift. there's no action <laughs> well, let's remind him how strong chief is by moving <laughs> like, like okay i like, got i i don't really know what the the point is but one thing i'll say that the meeting with Soren, I thought, went off pretty well. I think they were kind of harping on that five minutes thing a little oh, too much. God. I felt like every two seconds it was like, ah, uh, so how long did it take you to get here? Uh, about like seven minutes. Like, well, that's that's two more than you gave me. Like, so like, was, like I, I I just ordered some like some fast food. Well, how long did it take? Like, probably three minutes. That's why I did two less minutes than you gave me. Like, like all right, I get it, Soren. I gave you five minutes. Like I get it, dude. Like, okay. all right, no, all right, no, all right. So he asked for ten. It's not like you said, don't alarm. Like he's like, give me ten. <laughs> no, I'll give you five. All and right. like that five minutes where he walks off the set, not run, <laughs> he walks off the set. You know, like, like oh, what, okay. what are we I'm talking worse. about? I, I honestly was so confused on like it was just like too much. I get it. You you didn't have to remind us five times that you gave him five minutes. Like he even said it at the end too, which is like. Like, okay, man, I'm leaving. Like, yeah, that's but, enough. For the audience that doesn't know, those five minutes, he was hunted down by UNSC, shot down. And he got he got shot down and got burned up, yeah. apparently. And it's messed up. But, like, the whole point is, like, okay, you told me twice, five minutes. All right, don't tell me three more times. Like, this is the equivalent number of times, the minutes I gave you. Like, just, like, I get it. Like, just we'll yeah. move on. And they could have you know I mean? known it for five minutes, you know, was an issue, which clearly it was. Why didn't they set up like more tension? You know what I mean? Like maybe in the beginning, like so I'd be like, "Hey, yo, Thor, my boy Chief, how you doing?" a god on Chief, and he talks yeah. his way out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like at the end, before he leaves, he puts a gun on Quan. You know what I mean? Like that's how you can like that's the resentment. And why that's should I? Why should I do this for you after you didn't? You know what I mean? Not just say like how dude. many five minute references can you make? Dude, uh, in a, in a, <laughs> how many ways do you mouth. say five minutes in different languages? I know. Like, <laughs> like that's just, and that's what I mean. Like the story <laughs> character is good, and I also think the guy who plays Chief is not bad. It's just yeah. like, who's writing this? I who's dude, writing I, like this confrontation. Dude, in my opinion, like the way you could have solved this issue, like you said, make the tension. I think in the very beginning, make it like where Chief's at gunpoint, right? And instead of you like doing like the whole like, all right, let me take off my helmet, so then you just don't oh shoot me in the face. God. Do like do something like. Like, listen, I'm here to save Quan. I'm here to try to help her. And then, like, and then, like, Soren realizes, like, oh, this is not the robotic dude that I like. Gave me only five minutes. It's not the robotic guy that gave me five minutes. This is, it seems like a different guy. And then they start trusting each other a little bit more instead yeah, of it being like, yo, must this my dude, Chief? Or maybe Soren like sets Chief up, and at the end, like I said, like pull the gun on Quan and, and like, like yeah, but he has a bounty. She has a bounty on her head, like. Set do something with that, and then yeah. like something like and, you know, I and I get it. They're they're literally grew up together because they're like Spartans. But like that's the whole point. You could build tension where it's like, dude, I got my whole body's burned up because of you, right? And you can yeah. make it where it's a little tension here instead of being like, hey, chief, what's up, man? How you doing? You gave me five <laughs> minutes, but I still love you, man. Like what? Are you, like what? Like come on, like you could do better than that. And, and just five minute digs, like every yeah, other uh, five minutes. Like every time he's like, well, he's, he's eating dinner. Five minutes you gave me that. Like telling his wife, like yeah, five, five, five minutes, minutes. Like, five minutes for this broccoli to steam up. Like, like yo, know, like what are we talking? And then so the kind of finish off beginning, uh, and I'll kind of connect this to the middle too. Was Halsey the introduction of Lord Hood um, into the into the story, and then kind of building right into that with the committee. The UNSC had that committee where they had. You know, everyone around the table and the discussing, all right, what the hell do we do now? Chief has gone rogue. You know, what do we do with him? Like, do we do we get rid of him? And Lord Hood, like, I, I already kind of like the guy because he's kind of the only one thinking with sense. He's like, like, so we're going to wipe out our best uh, Spartan of everybody. Like, that's that's the plan. Like, that's that's what everyone here is telling me. And he's like, maybe we can, like, not do that and maybe bring him in and, like, make sure that we can, like, control him. And especially when he talks to Halsey and Halsey says... I have a way that we can control them, and that's Cortana. And he's like, all right, then why don't you bring it up to the committee when I say something about it so that it you, people start hearing about this process and maybe you'll get yeah. funding. Because that was the whole battle of the episode was who can get more funding, right? And she, Lord Hood is like the only guy with a brain cell that says, all right, why don't we just tell everybody that this is your plan and then maybe you'll get it. And I liked Halsey and everything, but it's just like felt like Lord Hood was like the straightforward smart character and i like the way he was portrayed here 
Granted, he only had like maybe 10, five to seven minutes of play of showtime. But I like those seven minutes because it like he comes off as being that quick, concise, just like smart dude. And he's supposed to be that. Um, but this whole battle between the political, like who gets who gets funding is stupid to me. And uh, the way that they explained Cortana made me almost have an aneurysm in school. Like I almost had like a full blown like heart attack while I was watching the video because they Halsey explains Cortana is someone that could control the minds of the Spartans. And it kind of came off to me, like especially every time I see Cortana in that that tub. And it gets me like nervous because I'm like, is this like a, a AI that's human size that can control people's minds? Because if that's the case, then that literally will make me sick to my stomach. That will literally is like we have like a mind reader, like, oh, she has the ability to read your mind like a psychic. And that's why Chief can't do like his thing because she'll just mind read him and she'll she'll accompany him on missions and she'll just mind read him. Like, like that's stupid. Like, that's like what I want to do. I want to grab the shirts of the writers, like bring them close and be like, that's stupid guys. That's stupid. And I want to get your feelings on this because I, I really, like I said, I almost had an aneurysm while watching. So yeah, I mean, I, I thought we would go to Cortana at the end. Uh, well, listen, oh, cause we, we mentioned Cortana and Halsey yeah. and well, I'll talk, we'll talk about the last scene, I guess when yeah, we yeah. get to the ending, but this was like how she talked about Cortana. She yeah. just says, this is what Cortana is. This is what she does. And I sat there like Halsey, that's stupid. Like that stop it, Halsey. That sounds stupid. And yeah. apparently it was a brilliant idea. But so go ahead, Majelica. What's your input I, uh, here? Well, I didn't even know. They didn't actually say Lord Hood in the episode. Uh, I assumed it was Lord Hood. No, they said they said they said Did Hood. They? Like yeah, they actually okay. said it was. So maybe Hood. I just missed it because like they also like refused to say anyone's names at the at the yeah. counter besides Keys. Like yeah, uh, Keys and Halsey is the only one they mentioned. Uh, and you have all these people lined up in the council. Um, but I liked, again, Halsey's not a very likable character. She's not supposed to be. She's supposed to be conniving. She's supposed to be finding ways to get what she wants. So she spoke with Hood before the meeting and kind of slipped in how they can control the Spartans, which is their most important asset, um, before the meeting, right? So, like, Hood didn't want to hear the details. He wants the results, right? So it was kind of smart for her to go, like, behind the Admiral's back to Lord Hood. And then Lord Hood kind of set up the meeting to kind of give credit to the Admiral and put the Admiral on the spot where she had no choice but to accept uh, the Cortana experiment that they're going to run. And it's going to be a kind of an experiment uh, that they're going to like a test. They're going to test it out. Um, but like you mentioned about Cortana, it was confusing uh, to say the least on how she is created. Mm -hmm. um, I always was thinking that maybe she was just the psyche of a clone of Halsey. Um, but this is to be determined, right? Because they just kept mentioning this is about cloning. Uh, this is about, you know, the this this next clone. stage of evolution. Like, yeah, this clone could, could control the minds of Spartans. And they even brought up, well, could it also control the minds of other humans, right? So that was kind of the danger of why it wasn't given funding um, on the. the that kind of power um but we're gonna see but that like that stuff to me it just feels like this is an ai right like we're talking <laughs> about an ai or are we talking about like like i don't even know what to call this this is a sci-fi like being oh that god control people with their minds are they gonna start making things like they're gonna get jedi powers type stuff like what are we what are we <laughs> those are not the words you're looking for yeah, yeah, like what are we doing at this point? Um, so that's the part that really. This is good writing. This is that, good writing. Yeah, that that's the scene that really like my eyebrows go up, wondering like, damn, where are we going with this one? Yeah, no, um, that 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 got me bugged out. Um, hockey, do you have any words on this one? Uh, before we get to the next <laughs> the next little uh, weird part. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I just like just, just to go off what you guys are saying. You know, Lord Hood, uh, straight shooter. I thought, um, I like the actor, kind of like you were saying, Mars man. Uh, again, Halsey's trying to uh, be sneaky with her whole Cortana thing that is not really legal, I guess they were saying, you know, but she's kind of doing it under wraps, um, putting the Admiral on the spot and everything. Um, again, I, I think one of the biggest problems, and you guys, I didn't even know this, and you guys had brought it up to me, was that, you know, the, the director or the main writer, you know, never played Halo or, or knew anything about Halo. They're, they're just throwing 
they're just throwing crap at the wall and, and seeing what sticks and then you know it's just it's getting me real nervous because yeah cortana is supposed to be like this big and i'm pretty sure you're supposed to like put it in the back of the helmet you know and she's a regular human and i mean if master chief doesn't have his helmet on <laughs> the whole episode I, how is she gonna get how is she gonna control his head if he doesn't wear yeah. his helmet yeah. i mean oh Oh, that, that's 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 a good. You think about that, Halsey. He doesn't wear his helmet anymore, so I mean, that <laughs> well, might screw up your whole plan. That yeah. means if she's an AI, that, well, she might be a female, and then like she's she's got a she's got a rocking bod, so that's why she's gonna be stuck. It's just she's mind's gonna be controlled by that. Um, but that's why it gets me even more furious because it doesn't make any sense then, because he barely wears his helmet anyway. So what's the point of him having an AI in his head? Um, next move, next major topic in the middle section is the covenant now the covenant on high charity maki and, and they because remember the episode first episode with maki says i gotta question this elite that apparently saw uh the spartan turn on the uh, the forerunner uh, you know artifact and so here's maki straight up just badgering this elite just straight up just like you know how you like tell me what they look like uh, like just straight up right in front of the prophets and it kind of got me a little weird because i'm like okay so Maki is a human, right? And yeah. humans are supposed to be like under tiers. Like if you're looking at every every covenant species, humans are at the very bottom. Like they're like the, the the enemy, right? So here is a human that is straight up doing the job of other top elites or top generals of like interrogating somebody about what the heck they saw. And I honestly was like, I, I don't like this. I don't like this this look because. You know how the hell does she rise up the ranks but then no other elite no other alien could do that um and it gets me nervous of what's to come now the other prophets they looked great i thought the truth for mercy and regret all looked good and i said this in the in the non-spoiler they all they all sound and look too too similar to me i think they gotta be different like i'm not saying because obviously this is years earlier this is like chief in this 30 early 30s like time period so this is like earlier in the, in the history but in the games, Mercy was old as hell. Regret was younger, and Truth was in between. So, like, you could tell them all, by all three of them that they were different. They all acted different. They all sounded different. And you could tell which is which. This one, I couldn't tell. I, I honestly couldn't tell, except for Mercy was white. Like, he was the white-colored one. The other two were brown. And they all sounded exactly the same. But I didn't really like that idea. I didn't like the fact that you couldn't. Like, there's no differences. They're all the same. And I, they're not. Like, that, that's the point. If you're following lore, following story, they're not the same, and, and different, I uh, different like different uh, personalities, different personalities, different ways they act, different motives, right? And I think that was something that I liked about the Covenant story, but not this one. Um, they didn't do that, and Maki's like this like interrogator now, and I kind of want to get your feelings about that part before we get to the next portion. Um, yeah. But yeah, so uh, so uh, Haki, I want you to go first. What do you think about Maki? The scene that Maki and the High Charity like? Did, did you did you like it? Did not like it? Yeah, I mean. Uh... I, I don't know how I feel about her just in general, you know, like, again, um, I think she went into the story of, of what happened to her. I guess they had found her, you know, uh, I think she did, they tortured her and I guess taught her the way or whatever. They actually figured out that she was able to, you know, she's a blessed one that she was able to activate these, um, uh, uh, these, I guess, the weapons you can call them or, or you know, ar artifacts. Um, but yeah, the way she treated the elite was definitely weird, you know? Um, and I think she only said one of the prophet's names, right? She only said... She said Mercy. Mercy. That was the only one. Yeah, which was a little weird, too, that she was directing it at Mercy. Again, I'm not super into the lore. Is Mercy like the head? No, well, no. this is what generally what happens is Prophet of Truth was like generally the head yeah, okay. of it. And he was like the head. He was like the kind of conniving guy that ended up really being the only prophet to live throughout the main storyline. But yeah. Mercy is supposed to be the older one that was there for the longest. Regret wow. was the younger prophet that was there the newest, and he's supposed to be, like, fanatical, like, over the top in his speeches. Mercy is, like, always, like, talking so, like, like, like about the about the religion so heavily, like, always interrupting people. And Truth is, like, kind of like the, you know, te like, tempered guy. That And that was how the story was always like. And that's why... You know, this whole thing where they're all literally identical. They're all the same in every way. And I didn't like that. I like the fact that they had differences. I like yeah. the way you can pick who's who. Like, you could know. I didn't know that until Mercy because he's the only one that has a different color scheme to him. Um, but everyone else is the same. 
Um, I also didn't like the fact that the elite basically like had zero to little any lines. He literally was just doing the like this thing. Yeah, it, it, it made it didn't really make a lot of sense to me. I guess he was trying to point to the Halo ring, but like it just like he didn't make a lot of sense. And it's apparently, in the, in the air, it, just, like, it looked like this. Took like a circle. It's a weird. circle. It's like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just, just like this it's thing. Just like. Just yeah, like, like safe. What, what, what are you just like talking like about <laughs> healing? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just like, what are we doing? Can I just like... hop in? I I was nervous, and I said this before the, <laughs> the show when we talked about the preview to the show that this character was would maybe very nervous. And, <laughs> yes, and yes. They have not quelled that at all, and they just continue to make me more nervous mm -hmm. um, because she has a lot of power. And like the covenant hates humans, so I'm confused on, you know, like how I get it. Her power is what is, and, and they they kind of brainwashed her into hating humans. I get that, but like she's like right below the prophets. Yeah, and was, seriously. Like, and not even that. After she interrogates them and he tells them that this person, you know, they have the artifact and they can control it, she's like, "I'm gonna go get it. Like, let me go get it." And they were like. No, no, we can't risk you going like, like what? Well, listen, this is more. I saw another trailer for the next episode, and oh Maki, Maki is gonna be. This is the scene where Maki goes and and goes gets the. That's like the scene where she's throwing worms at people. That that scene is gonna happen. So that's uh, so that that's what's gonna happen next. Yeah, what a great opportunity to introduce generals of elites. Yeah, why don't you bring a full force? Bring why don't you bring elites with you? Like. Do you want yeah. to go with a crew? It could like, be a, I'm just saying, even that scene, you could have another elite interrogate. You could have had the prophets interrogate. Dude, like, it felt like they, there's only like five aliens in the covenant. That's yeah. it. It feels like, and, and it feels like there's like a total like, five aliens and one human. Like, that's like, that's what the covenant so, is. That's group. You that's can make it. it so simple. Like, Maki, <laughs> who's not like loved, but like is given like this power, there's definitely have to be resentment with the elites. Yeah, right? you could sense that with the elite she was talking to. Like, He's kind of like, who the hell are you talking yeah, like? And like, like no, you didn't like, create any of that. Like, no. you could have had her like speak out of terms and like. And know, the other prophets like, friction. what do you? Yeah, all, let the other prophets be like, what do you? Who are yeah. you to say something like but that? You like, did none of that. Some, yeah, something just, to at least build that tension. Um, listen, we got to move to the next yeah. middle part. I, I there's one more thing I just want to mention. Oh um, yeah. And you, and you guys can part. comment. No, well, this is the middle. This is just still the part of the middle. The Miranda versus Halsey like oh. political. I, uh, what, what were do you even, talking do about? Do we even spend time on that? Yeah, which one were you talking about? The ref? You talking about ref? Because this yeah, is the last part. Because this is the lesson. final. This is the end. This is the yeah, end section. Talking about the so let's talk about ref. Let's talk about ref. So this is I mentioned this in the non-spoiler section, but ref is supposed is a lore character that is a jackal who used to be like apparently he was like a, a pirate or a scavenger that was part of the covenant. He was a jackal. So they enter, so Soren, Chief, and Quan with the artifact enter through this cagey area. They're like, well, this is not a prison. They just like the they just like this spot. And it's literally it looks like a prison. There's literally cages and stuff. They're like, that yeah. doesn't make any sense. So they walk crazy. in, and there's a bunch of crazy people like literally like 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 acting like yelling and like 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 growling and like eating like anything, like eating sweets and stuff. Like, and I'm like, if you didn't know about this, and I know you you guys didn't really know that. Reth is supposed to be, and all those people are supposed to be jackals. Like, you you didn't know that, then you would be like, "This is the weirdest thing I'm watching right now." Like, what? Why are these people? Yeah, mental like, this is a mental. Like, it, but then when I'm watching this and I know that Reth and those people are supposed to be jackals, it gets me furious. It gets me angry because I'm like, so you guys took no time to make mo uh, using money for CGI to make at least one jackal. Like the main guy, Reth, a jackal. To be like, there's more than three species in this entire move in this entire show. Like you have elites, the prophets, and humans. You're telling me that Halo has three. That's it. That's all Halo has is three species of people. That three species of beings in this entire thing. Give me a jackal. You didn't need a jackal to do cartwheels and backflips. You just need a jackal to say the exact things that this guy said, and that's it. Because it would have made perfect sense, and it would have appeased everybody. Because the jack he literally acted like a jackal kudos for you man for a dude that literally had to look like a freak literally look like a freak growling and yelling like that congratulations man you deserve an oscar for that performance because that was what a jackal would do if that was a jackal but you're not 
Um, and it just makes doesn't make any sense to me why they couldn't do that. And Wrath, the whole scene with Wrath just boggles my mind. Because I don't mind the scene of what they're trying to say. Because, like, well, Wrath will spend his time with the Covenant because he was captured. Like, but how would he know everything about Forerunner yes. Tech if he was a human that was captured by the Covenant? That did could they, like, it. Yeah, did they, like, did they, like, show, like... Hey, hey, human! What do you think about this? Like this artifact, in, like the information, this instructional guide. Like, do you know about this? Like, how would the human know about that stuff? Like, even in being on the ship doesn't mean that they tell you everything. But if you're part of the covenant, if you're an alien in the covenant, then maybe you would like understand. Like, this is what the stuff is, and this is what they tell us this is. Then that makes so much sense. Yeah. And that's the point of why I'm angry about the scene. But I want to get your guys' opinions because I can go a whole rant about wrath. But what do you so Lejoka, what do you think I about mean, Wrath? I know some of the lore, I don't know as much as you, and when you told me that, I was like, okay, that would make so much more sense. Because I'm like, how does this dude know? Number one, he can he knows what the artifact shows. Number two, knows what the Covenant's plans are. And like and number three, like we know the Covenant was capturing humans to see who can activate, find blessed ones, they call it, right? Those who can activate the artifacts, which I thought Mars may correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, yes, All yes. humans were supposed yep, to be able to yep, activate them. Yep. So yep, yep. they changed that part to now special humans can can activate them, the blessed ones. Okay, so okay, they want to go with the blessed ones are whatever. How did he get captured? They find out he doesn't activate it and lives to tell the tale. Mm -hmm. How did they not just whack him off? Yeah. Right? How did the come not whack him off? So if he was a jackal who ran off. That makes so much more sense for him to understand what the hell is going on. Yeah. And what that it's a map. How does that guy know it's a map to the yeah. Halo Ring? And what I, the Halo Ring is? How? It made that makes no sense. That makes no sense. And then to add it on, that's when we saw the angry chief Batman interrogation scene. Where where, where are, are they? Where yeah. are <laughs> and that's what it felt like. He throws him up against the cage. What am I? <laughs> like that was so anti chief. Yeah, I know. That is so anti-chief. I, I, oh so, Hockey, what do you think before we move to the next part? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was just, it was just bad. Like, I, I didn't know. I thought the entire scene was just so weird, <laughs> and now it makes an outrageous amount of sense. That guy was not acting even like a mentally insane human. He was acting like a jackal, and he just. And he, like you, know, like you guys said, the Batman Joker scene or the Larry Shay, like <laughs> the Tony where Rachel is, like it was so ridiculous. The only thing, and I don't know if I'm just reaching at this point because I just want something exciting to happen. He said, you know, uh, Master Chief was like, you know, what is it for? What is it used for? Um, and the guy said something about like it, it's used for the end or, or something like that. I don't know mm -hmm. if he was just talking about the ring in general or if he was maybe referencing the flood, I don't know if that makes sense. It was, I think he was saying, like, he said something that got me nervous first. And then when he said, finished his sentence, like, I was like, okay. He was like, this is a portal. I was like, and I was like, what What did you just say? And then he's like, it's a portal. It would be the end of us yeah, all. I was like, okay. Yeah. It was the, I was like, oh, okay. Because so I was, because I, to a yeah. weapon. Yeah. Like and then and this is my favorite. Chief, like, you know, Chief touches it, like, Oh, he starts like making like oh, like his fake facial thing, and I was like, like please just put a helmet on, damn it! Like just put a damn helmet on. He doesn't put faces like that. Um, but uh, so let's go to the next part. <laughs> You're almost at the end here. So we have uh, so that's going at the chief is now leaving Quan with Soren, and it was like this interaction between the two. I kind of was like, it was actually not bad. I like basically he has to reference the five minutes again because it wouldn't be. <laughs> An episode without mentioning five minutes you gave me, and he's like, "Listen, I want. I don't really care." Like he, Chief said something that I was thinking. Like I honestly don't care that I gave you five minutes, but I need you to protect Juana. I need to trust you that you're gonna do that. And it kind of showed like that, like emotion. But it feels like you gotta build, build to that, guys. Like build to that. Like Chief, like letting Quan in Soren's hands should be like a bigger deal, right? But it's only been one episode that they've been together. One full TV time episode. I don't know how many days it's been. In the in the show world, but it's only it, my technically it could be like three days max, and I don't think Chief like you got to take care of Quan for me, Soren. Like, it means it really, and you need, I need to trust you on that, Soren. Like, like it didn't There's seem no like connection. that big of a deal. There's not that big of a deal. Like th that's what I mean. Like that whole last scene, music's playing higher, and like oh, Chief's leaving me behind. Like you don't barely know Chief. He killed your parents. 
You killed your mom. I mean, like, what does that matter to you? Like, yeah, thanks. That see ya. Like, what does that matter? But they made it seem like it was a big deal. It's not. And then, like, Chief goes back to the UNC to the Spartans and how he's arrested. And then he has this conversation with Halsey. And uh, it kind of was a little weird for me. Like, like Halsey, I think generally, I know that Halsey was trying to be like a oh, distance herself from Chief, but understanding the Lord, like technically Halsey was the closest thing that Chief has to a mom. And Chief was Halsey's favorite, like by far. If you ever watched Lore, understand Lore. So I honestly, when he was saying, I saw memories and like, she was like, I don't want to talk about that right now with you. Like, she's like, what? Like, just like, I, it didn't feel right. It kind of felt like, uh, just, just talk to him. Like, it, honestly, it would build that connection more if yeah. you did. And, and they the, just did they the do that way. More. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so exactly. Like, it was kind of just like so obvious it's a manipulation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't play it well. Like, it's just like, no, nah, don't talk about that. Yeah. Like, and so, Haki, what do you think about this before we get the last, uh, we get, we get to the spicy scene uh, so of the I, show? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Spicy. <laughs> spicy scene. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Yeah, yes. How spicy, not that spicy. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so hey, positive. He had his helmet on while he was being brought in. No, he didn't. No. He had his helmet off. <laughs> he had his helmet on. Yeah, no on. So he got his helmet on. He put his helmet back on to go back in the ship. Yeah, and then that's he gets the arrested, the takes his helmet back off. <laughs> his helmet back he, off. Yeah, helmet no armor off on. getting arrested. No armor. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> Yeah, uh, right beforehand. Yeah, put the helmet. Yes. Yeah, I just gotta check and see if it fits. All right, we're good. Right. <laughs> this is my helmet, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, oh, wait. This is Soren's helmet. My bad. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I gotta go back. I'll bring Claude. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, dude. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so much bad yeah. in this episode. Yeah. Like, uh, so again, yeah, the interaction was a little weird. Um, and he 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 also went off and was saying, you know, like I couldn't kill her. And uh, Halsey was like, "Well, you've killed so many people. Why is this different?" So you got you got to see like Chief kind of that. Like- that was why. That's why I, the only part of that last sequence I liked because it kind of yeah. it ga- it did what it needed to do. It showed that connect- human thing and it had that connection with Chief and Halsey. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with. And but my point is, why don't you have conversations like that more meaningful, more impactful? But yeah. there's so many of these dumb ones. And just to top it all off, we have the last scene. As wait, she's wait, saying, can I, just, can I just real yeah, quick? Yeah, go ahead. I don't want to rush on time. The um, we didn't talk about Quan watching uh, Venture. Oh, uh, I mean, now the, a lot of people are speculating that because apparently when Venture's tapping people, there's a drone that shows oh, up just know. watching, and then he just shoots the drone and just disappears. Right. So people are debating on one whether Quan pi- physically piloted a drone all the way to Magical uh, to spy on that guy, and then he's like shoots it or it was a news like a news one okay. and she was tuning in that's that's the only reason why yeah, i didn't like because a lot of people were like how is how did kwan yeah. pilot a drone from soren's bedroom yeah i just to, wanted to throw that out but yeah two way. yeah two match I, I i agree with you and i was like I, i'm just gonna let that go because i have no idea about the yeah. context but last part maki's getting naked to go take a bath or something and what i noticed on the back is the mark of shame the bandit, like the shame, like seal that, like that. There's a mark that they give people when they are like shamed from losing conflicts or losing something. They get shamed by the covenant. And the last person, the last thing I saw that had that was the arbiter from the Halo Two. And this is where I get nervous because I'm not saying that Maki will be the arbiter because that arbiter is only elites, but Maki taking on the story arc that Arbiter has is what I get furious about because that would make little to zero sense if that's the case. And I have a weird, weird feeling that that's going to happen because what my prediction is, and this is a bold take, my prediction is that Maki is going to do these missions for the, for the prophets. They're going to realize that she's not the only blessed one out there. They're going to whack her off, attempt to whack her off. She's going to survive the whacking. And then she's going to be on her revenge tour of trying to get after the prophets like Arbiter does in Halo 2. Oh. And honestly, if they did that, I think I'm done watching the show. Like, I don't care. <laughs> like, I might be done with it. Like, I honestly might walk away and say, I made a good enough review videos on the show. I think I did my part. I'm going to walk away from it and just, I'll wait till season two to see if they, what they do anything different. Because honestly, that, that grosses me the hell out. And, uh, 
Like it bothers me because I, I have a weird inkling that that's going to happen. And I'm not, I'm no story writer, but I, I know Halo and I know so far I've gotten to the minds of these writers like Cortana is about to do the chief next episode. And uh, me, while well, me standing behind them, like, like how she's going to do next episode. Um, and I can kind of have a weird feeling that that's going to happen. So I want to get your input before we close out the show here. I mean, that uh, was a great find. I didn't even notice. I knew this the mark. I didn't know what the mark was. But my God, if you predict that correctly, what a disaster. <laughs> now, like, <laughs> I, um, <laughs> what? I, I just, like, what a disaster. <laughs> I'm yeah. okay with, like, I have a feeling what you said is going to happen with the finding the blessed ones, and they say, we don't need this, you know, girl. Um, but if she's taking over, like, the Arbiter story arc, there's not an Arbiter, or, like, they destroy the Arbiter character that eventually we're hoping comes in. I mean, that might be the final nail. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, really I know, like yeah. The, the final nail for me, too. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just silver timeline like you can shove it right up your rectum like yeah. that's not yeah. like silver timeline you want to change things up but like you can't 180 everything mm -hmm. and so if that's true that that's a no-go for me but uh i agree dude but that what i was thinking when they were doing that which number one the naked scene just came so out of nowhere like, like it was just so random mm -hmm. right oh. like oh giving us like side moves okay <laughs> okay um <laughs> Barely. It was random because <laughs> it was like corresponding with Chief talking to Halsey. And like, all, the only thing I was thinking of was like, they're not going to eventually make Chief have like a relationship with, with Maki, right? Don't, don't say that. I, I don't, that was I, my I, prediction. I don't, like, you don't made say that. Prediction, that. Which, which sound, but like, because Chief is like clothes off, like helmet off, is he going to like, at some point in this show, have a relationship with Maki? If you're, if writers of Halo's U show, if you're listening, that's, the best idea I've ever heard. So you should definitely write that in because everything that Halo fans like, you do the opposite. So yeah, do that. That's a great idea. God. God. As long Go as ahead, Aki. Go ahead. Let that marinate a little. <laughs> so yes, I mean, you know, that would be better than, than other versions, I guess. But yeah, that would that would be. Uh, I'm. I, 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 I'm sorry, hockey, but I. No, no. Go ahead. I'll add my last point after. Yeah, I was gonna ahead. say I'm. I'll. I'll be scared if. Uh, if the arbiter's not, uh, an elite, you know, that would be <laughs> that would be scary. Both of what you guys just said would be scary. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure Chief is in love with Cortana, and if Cortana's that real girl that we know, I'm thinking that That's they're another one. They're gonna do something. That was my guess you know <laughs> That's uh, another one. what i'm thinking is if if that girl that mars man uh you know, whatever her name is uh, uh maki? maki maki if she goes arbor then they disband her and she tries to go all crazy on uh you know the prophets and the covenant that's when i can see master chief linking up with her but if cortana's a real chick then i'm thinking master chief's gonna get in there with cortana which dude uh, those options. We're, we're running we're running out of time but one thing i'll say last thing before i head off if both those things happen where you would <laughs> not only does she take the arbiter arc but then she she and chief are together i like legit might have to like not only disown paramount plus but get off all streaming services just like just <laughs> just turn off turn off my tv and just call it a month like I'm, i think i'm good with that because that i i literally got sick to my stomach um I, I honestly, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's the first episode where refrigerators were like knocking over trucks and, and rebel machine guns weren't working against the Leafs and stuff like that. If the first episode was the best episode of this entire series, they're I'll doomed. be very, very upset. Yeah, they're doomed if that's true. You know, you know they, they they have to prove from here. Like, I get it. No, ex next episode is going to be an action. It's going to be action. I already saw some trailers for it. Um, they have to have action. They have to have some fighting because they, they do a decent job of choreographing like events. It seems like that the chore the choreography was pretty solid. But whenever they do just full political things, it's boring as hell, you know. But um, yeah, so that's our spoiler section, guys. Uh, hell, yeah. I honestly feel like I need a drink after that, and uh, it was a long one for sure. Uh, but thank you guys for watching up to this point and. Please make sure if you like this type of content, you drop a thumbs up. 
and subscribe for more future content to, to come. And we have a lot of these types of shows, a lot of round tables. We do a lot of review, a lot of reviews, a lot of streaming. Um, and I also make some uh, individual content stuff as well. But thank you guys for watching. This is Marsman from Marsman Gaming here. I'm signing out for the night. Peace.